Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am thrilled to be with Sir Ben Kingsley to talk about Dolly Land. Wonderful to be here. Sir, I'm, I'm going to say this to you. Um, you will not remember this, but many, many years ago when Collider was a much smaller operation, um, I was thrilled. I mean, literally thrilled and over the moon because I got to talk to you for the wackness at Sundance. Right. And at the time, the site was just a much smaller operation. And the concept that I was going to talk to you for a movie blew my mind. And you were so gracious and kind and just I, I walked away just so just grateful for the experience and I've wanted to thank you and I just wanted to say sincerely thank you. I'm glad I left a good smell behind. <laughs> you, well, you know something, um, the thing that I have find, uh, what I love about your work is it so, can be so vastly different yet they're all anchored by your strong performances which leads me to Dolly Land. Thank you. Um, I obviously loved your work in this and I'm a huge fan of Dolly but I did not actually understand a lot of the stuff that went happened in the 70s. So I found this to be very fascinating because I learned a lot. Uh, I would imagine you get offered a lot of scripts. I have to ask you, what was it about this one and, and this character that said, I have to do this? Quite honestly, I find Dali's work sublime and beautiful, provoking, and something in me recognizes what he's trying to say as an artist. I don't know what it is. I'm certainly not equating my, my, my humble craftsmanship with his genius, but there is a resonance. Now, this is not always essential when playing a character, but it is a bonus sometimes. And um, what, what this script and portraying him encouraged me to do, thanks to the wonderful Mary Heron, was to take risks as an actor equivalent to the risks he took as a painter. I think if an actor, I've just been with, the, with my, my heroine, Tilda Swinton, and I can quote her or misquote her, but I know she has said, there's an awful lot of nonsense talked about acting. And acting is a, is a combination of empathy and transformation. And that applied to Dali means that I, the humble actor or portrait artist, have to take risks as an actor parallel to the risks he took as a painter. Therefore, I cannot give a careful performance. That for me was a really attractive exercise beyond the man himself, whom I, whom I, if I, if I were in his company, would be quite intimidated by him. But I think I would just follow him uh, as part of his party entourage and say, I want to be with that guy. One of the things, sometimes titles don't work for me, but after seeing this film, Dolly Land is literally the perfect title because it is literally th this land of characters and eccentric people. I, I think the title is perfect. Also, Mary, Mary's choice of title is enhanced by the performance of Chris Briney, who is the lens or the prism through which we see Dali. And because Chris gave such a pure performance, um, therefore his, I think he paralleled, also allowed the parallel between actor and character to, to coexist. Because I know that being so young in his career, that he was um, taking first steps and allowed himself to be surprised as an actor and surprised as a character. Therefore, his, his energy transmits to the audience, I can't quite believe I'm here. <laughs> I, mean that, I mean that most sincerely and kindly to him. One of the things I'm fascinated by with, an act, with all actors is being able to let go of the character that you're playing. You have played so many iconic roles and delivered so many vastly different performances. Are you able at this moment when a film wraps or a project you're involved with wraps to immediately let go of the character you're playing? Or do you feel that it's like a good week or two where you still feel remnants? I think that perhaps as an actor, I could try and describe myself as a portrait artist. And therefore, on a really good day with a really lovely project, 
It is as if Dali is in my studio and I am painting him. So I have to say that after the last day of filming, which was an extraordinary day, I won't go into details now, but it was quite extraordinary. I missed him terribly. Um, every time, one of the things that I found with speaking to actors is that when they're shooting a project, there will be a day on the shoot that they are either very nervous about or very excited about. They know that it'll be a challenging day where they might have to go deep and find something inside them to bring to the to life. On Dollyland, what day was that for you? I remember speaking with our wonderful producer, Chris Curling, <clears throat> Chris Curling, on the day. And I said to him after the day had finished, I did not know at the beginning of the day how I was going to get through the day, but at the end of the day, I didn't want it to finish. This day was when I was playing Dali dying in a wheelchair with a tube in his nostril because he couldn't eat without food being passed through his nostril. A devastating journey from the most gloriously char charismatic man to an almost cadaver in a wheelchair. And I also spoke Catalan and I reproduced documentary footage of Dali in the hospital and I was allowed, thanks to Mary's graciousness, I was allowed to recreate that scene in the hospital as myself portraying Dali dying. That for me was one of the most extraordinary days of my career. I don't wish to color it in any way by, by, by pushing or manipulating the audience's response to that day, but since you ask, and it's a glorious question, I have to say that that day I will remember forever. Something I, I obviously knew about Dolly, but I didn't really, I didn't know that much about his relationship with, with Gala. Um, wait, I said that right, yes. And um, I wanted- Gala. Yeah, I'm sorry. That, I knew I was saying it wrong. <laughs> no, I was like, I was like I, I'm like, I'm saying that's, this is that, not right. That's just, that's just his version of it. Right, um, uh, but I didn't know about their relationship and, the, and, and what they each sort of brought to it. Um, how much did you actually know about his personal relationship and his marriage prior to taking on the project? Well, I, I did know a little, uh, and then the script mapped it out so perfectly because Mary and John realized that it was, amongst other things, a story of a marriage or the disintegration of a marriage. It's like an autopsy of a relationship. Um, and for me, it made complete sense. Complete sense. Because of, of, of the refusal in Dali to mature from a child, to remain plastic and, and, and careless and free as a child throughout the whole of his life, what does that personality need? A mother. And either that role is resented at times because of your dependency upon it, or it's blessed at times. And I think the film embraces both ends of that spectrum. Something also that the film shines a light on is the, and, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but the corruption in the art world, which is something that's prevalent since, I mean, it, it keeps going. Um, uh, can you sort of talk about, like, is that something that you were familiar with? Is that something that, because um, I, I think it's something that people, you know, I, I don't want to get too deep into that aspect of the film, but um, if you could talk a little bit about that. It is a great tragedy that a genuine creative gesture can be hijacked for the worst possible motives. That's really all I can say. That it is a, it, it is a tragedy that something ge that genuinely and purely comes from the heart is hijacked by others for a corrupt agenda. I'm curious, obviously Dolly is known for his mustache and the way he looks. And I'm curious if you could talk about how long, and, and this is, I'm not sure if you worked with the costume designer, how it all came together, but how you ultimately decided on the exact mustache and your look of Dolly in the film. I worked with Suzanne Stokes Munton. And I was also sent um, a book of photographs, a book of collections of his mustache looks by a very dear friend of mine. And we chose the most iconic 
because what you have to be, what you have to present to the audience is an instantly recognizable and consistent image. Although he changed his look several times, we had to decide upon uh, a look that said to the audience immediately, Dali. And, and, and we homed in on that particular look, Suzanne and myself, and I'm very grateful to her for her wonderful work on the film. I believe you shot the movie over five weeks, which is- Very fast. Very fast. And for people that don't realize, that's a very fast shoot. Do you, as an actor, is that something that you relish where it's gonna be that kind of a tight schedule where everyone has to be on their game, you don't have a lot of takes, you gotta get it, or do you sort of prefer the longer shoot where it's a little bit slower and more, maybe you're only shooting a page or two in a day? Well, because this is an interview that will not be the best kept secret in town, I'm reluctant to say that I love to work under pressure because then they'll say, oh, you can get Kingsley to do three months work in four weeks, um, which, can, uh, which can be uh, harrowing. Um, let it take the time it takes. Let it take the time that is appropriate to the material. Um, Mary worked with great accuracy and great skill because she knew exactly what she wanted. Provided the director is in charge of every second and uses it judiciously, um, Let's, let's have all the time in the world. So I believe when you signed on to work with Marvel to do something in the Marvel universe, you had no idea where it was all gonna go. Are you surprised at how much fans love your work in the Marvel universe and the fact that you're gonna be, I guess, going back to it? Well, um, I haven't actually broken the news to Trev that he is about to embark on his third incarnation but if I can find him in, in some pub in Liverpool, I shall tell him gently and quietly in a corner, Trev, we're on. And I think he'll be delighted. Are, are you surprised? Of fan? I love your work in, in the MCU, and I'm sure you hear from fans all the time that they love it. Are, are, do, you, do you feel that love? Well, uh, um, let me, let me um, speculate on, on why. I think there is something, again, like Dali, there is something of the child in Trev, and there is something pure in Trev, and I perhaps that, that touches the, the unconscious in the audience. I don't really know. That's probably a ludicrous answer, but no, I, I, I had a go. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm, I have to stop there, and I'm just gonna say, Again, a sincere, with all my heart, thank you for coming in today to talk about Dollyland, and I wish you nothing but the best. You're very kind, thank you.